She grabbed two wine glasses, walked out to their private pool saying, are you gonna leave? Or are you gonna get your freaking revenge? If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. In this episode, a cheater is unwilling to share her secret with her spouse, but in the end, it will be the spouse that has to keep the most brutal act of revenge, or let's say, betrayal, a secret. I added something to the episode, the first one who finds it with the correct timestamp, gets pinned on top. Be sure to demand respect from the like button by gently destroying it with your vengeful rage. Let's dive in. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. It has been several years since the incident and I literally have never told anyone in my new life about this. The time frame of this story is 2013 to 2016. Tonight I have some good wine to drink and figure I'll let my fingers do the talking. I thought I had met the perfect woman. We met in the last year of college. We met at a party and hit it off instantly. She was a beautiful blonde with sun-kissed skin and she could have been a model. Think of Kate Upton type figure. She was kind, compassionate, sympathetic, good listener, and had an active life with many friends. She liked my friends and it was awesome over the three years we knew each other and how our friend groups merged. Several of our friends began dating each other. It was some of the best times of my life. I was on for a postgrad in finance and she had a degree in contractual law. This is just to say we ended up being successful in our own rights. But I'm no slouch in the looks department either. 5 feet 11 inches, 190 pounds and liked the gym. I wasn't a super athlete but let's just say I was built. But I was and still am very shy and didn't have a lot of prior relationships before meeting her. The first evening we met, we were smitten. First night we talked all night. Then it went to texting and phone calls daily, then dates weekly, then after a year, when I started working my new job, she moved in. I loved her family and her family loved me. Mostly her mother as her father was standoffish, as he was to everyone. It was a whirlwind romance. After two and a half blissful years of overseas vacations, hiking trips and luxury vacations, I proposed to her and she said yes. I was over the moon. She was doing all the planning for the wedding. We were talking about our futures together, buying a house, children and family trips that we were going to take together and all such things like that. Then it happened. One evening after we both got home to our apartment, she is a little distant. I think I noticed it right away as we were always very affectionate towards each other. This would only happen about once a week for the first month but then it would become more frequent. I would have been none the wiser except that I used to listen to a lot of Reddit on YouTube. So, I waited and observed. These bouts of ignoring me would only last a couple of hours, then she would be right back to normal. But after six months, with the wedding in a year, she was like this almost every night. Sexy time was still great. Relationship with her parents still great, but over Thanksgiving at her parents' home in Louisville, Kentucky, we lived just north of DC she was standoffish towards me in front of her mother. Now her mother was a very observant woman. She pulled her daughter aside to talk to her and I could hear them arguing. After some heated but muffled words they returned to the rest of the family and carried on like nothing was going on. I figured I could ask her about it later and did. She was not willing to talk about it and asked me to wait till we were home to discuss it. I agreed as I loved her deeply and thought we could work through anything. Her mother was an older version of her. Same stunning looks, just a few grays in her long thick blonde hair. This is important later. Back home I asked her about it, and she was unwilling to discuss it. When pressed on it for a week, she finally confessed that a guy at her work was trying to get to know her better. She wanted to be forthcoming, so she showed me her phone and as I looked through it, I noticed that all the texts that would have happened during the time she was withdrawing from me were removed. There was nothing untoward in the texts. But I did go into her phone settings and turned on her locator on her phone as we shared the same phone plan. And I honestly thought it would make me see that she was not doing anything wrong. Was I wrong? That second weekend after Thanksgiving she had a company Christmas party. 
I had planned on going but came down with food poisoning and had to back out. She had a girlfriend pick her up from our apartment as they planned on drinking a lot and made sure she had a designated driver for the evening. We had planned on going out all night, so I told her to have a blast and I would see her in the morning. So, as I'm puking my guts out and barely able to get off the toilet for more than 30 minutes, I grabbed my phone and watched her location. First it was a restaurant, then the venue of the company party, then a bar. None of this alarmed me until I saw her phone stop in a downtown hotel. At this point I was miserable in more ways than three. Projectile vomiting out my butt, mouth and now soul. I finally fell asleep due to sheer exhaustion at 2 am. At 7 am I awoke and saw she was still at the hotel. At noon she finally comes home, and I am on the mend. She loves me up and I asked her about the previous night without mentioning anything about knowing her locations. She talks about the restaurant, party, the bar, but then says she went to her girlfriend's house to crash for the evening. First lie. For the next three months, she has to start working later and this would happen three to four days a week. As I start asking her about it, she becomes more and more defensive. I talked to her mom one evening when fiancé didn't come home until late. I asked her mom about the Thanksgiving conversation and she admitted to me that she thought her daughter might be stepping out of our relationship, because of how she read her body language. She also said that her daughter was being more and more distant with her in their weekly texting conversations. With all this speculation that was going on in my mind, I kept it to myself. Two weeks later at work, I ended up getting a new project at my company that was going to require me to fly to the Midwest Monday through Friday for the next five weeks starting in two weeks. It came with an increase in salary and as I broke the news to my fiancé, she was delighted for me. I didn't think though that she was excited for the same reasons I was. So, I went online and ordered four motion-activated spy cameras for my apartment. I put one in the living room, one in the kitchen, one in our bedroom and one looking down our hallway. They were very small and connected to the internet via a hidden network, so they couldn't be spotted on the Wi-Fi network. I secured the cams with a password and waited. On my first week out she had girlfriends over the first two nights and never worked late once. The third night a guy came over. I was enraged. I'm sitting there in my hotel room screaming at the monitor and calling her every name in the book. Then they went all the way, first on the couch, then in our bed. She bent for ways for him that I didn't know were possible. What was the worst? was as I am watching them get it on I call her to see how her day went. She hears her phone ringing and holds her hand up for him to stop stretching her chocolate starfish and answers the call. I ask why she is breathing heavy and she said she was at the gym working out. As soon as the call is over she goes right back to doing the dirty. When I got home Friday evening, I ignored her and went right to bed, and early Saturday got up and went cycling. I was so upset that I didn't even realize that I biked over 50 miles from our apartment. The furthest I had biked before was 30 miles. Getting back absolutely exhausted I showered. Then she and I went out that evening and had fun with our friends and had a lot to drink. Is it breakup sexy time when the one you're going to break up with is oblivious? I was bursting inside. Heartbreak, anger, rage feelings of betrayal all swirled around in my heart and mind. She, who used to be so attentive was oblivious to all this. It hurt so much because I loved her so much. I finally confided in one of our mutual friends and he told me that they all knew about it for months. I was finally told, they all felt sorry for me, but again. Apparently no one said a damn thing to me. Which is why they stopped inviting us out with them. I hadn't noticed it before but I could look back and see that about three months prior they gradually invited us less and less. So I figured I would try and win her back, the next weekend I planned the entire weekend as a complete weekend of spoiling her in every way. Wined and dined, pampering, massages, rubs, and talking to her about future plans and about how much I loved her. I knew I was starting to break through when after her fourth glass of wine she started to cry, and I could tell the guilt was coming up to the surface. I asked her what was wrong, but she would choke up every time she tried to speak. I then told her that if she did something in her past, or was having some kind of conflict in her mind that she needed to speak to me about, 
that I was more than willing to talk with her about it, and if forgiveness was needed then I was more than willing to forgive and move on. The only words that came out of her mouth was how much she loved me. It actually hurt deeply to hear that from her, as I now had four separate videos of her and the other guy in our apartment getting it on. Over the next eight weeks of traveling to the Midwest, the trips lasted for what would be 10 weeks, I recorded over 41 hours of her having sexy time, with what I found out was her co-worker. She never worked late once while I was gone. I tried every weekend to be extra attentive and each week she got more and more distant. After watching this for 8 weeks, I was done. So I devised a 12-step getaway plan. Gather evidence and get her out of the way in order to execute my plan. I scheduled a two-week exclusive getaway trip for us at an all-inclusive resort Barbados. She was ecstatic. Then a week before the trip, I claimed I had to back out and told her to take a friend. I knew it was over when she showed no disappointment that I couldn't go. She scheduled a co-worker to go with her. I secretly terminated our apartment lease. It would expire three days into her trip and I was the sole signature on the lease. Find a job in another town. The company I had been assisting in the Midwest had offered me a job at with a slight increase in salary. Find a new place to live, I got an apartment in the above said location. When she is gone perform the following, step 6, take her to the airport, go back home and pack all her things in the same day. Saturday I took time for step 7. Get a new phone number and email. Cancel all social media. Monday 8. Separate us completely in regard to finances. Withdrew all cash from our joint accounts and then closed them. I put all her money in an envelope and packed it in her things. Monday 9. Have the movers pack all my things up and ship it west. Monday 10. Take all her things to her mother's house 600 miles away. All my fiancé's belongings fit into the back and bed of my F-250 crew cab. Tuesday through Saturday. 11. Give her mother the evidence. 12. Start my new life. I didn't want to do anything that was illegal, so I made sure that nothing of hers was missing. It was so hard to pack all her stuff nice and neatly away. I never cried so hard in my life. I have read so many times on Reddit about significant others saying they will never do it again when caught, but they don't stop. My hope was that she would genuinely confess, so we could forgive and move on but she never did. Twice she came really close, but her secret was too hard for her to reveal. Tuesday morning, I left our apartment north of DC for the last time. It took 10 hours to get to her mom's house. What happened when I got there I was not prepared for. I arrived at her mom's house around 8 in the evening. I figured she would be surprised to see me, since I was coming down unannounced. Since they lived in a gated community, I had to buzz her house from the front gate, so she was waiting for me outside when I drove up. I could tell that she had been crying when I walked up to see her. I asked her what was wrong and she hugged me bawling that she thought her husband was cheating on her with a much younger, skinnier and prettier woman. Dumbfounded, I just held her for what was probably 10 minutes. She soaked my right shoulder with her tears and snot. When she finally composed herself, I asked if we could go in a talk. We went in and I asked where her husband was, and she indicated that he said he was going fishing with his buddies at a remote cabin an hour away. Then she said, he hates fishing. She gave me all the indications that she had picked up on and apparently it had been going on for about a year. So, doing a little bit of research we found a credit card hold charge for a 5-star hotel that was only 20 minutes away. One call later confirmed her husband was in fact there for a 4-night stay cheating with his mistress. Two peas in a pod, I said. What? She responded. Two peas in a pod, I said again. Your husband is cheating on you and your daughter is cheating on me. That's why I came here to drop her stuff off and move away. I showed her the evidence in a binder on screen captures I had made. After looking at the first three or four pages she looked at me dumbfounded. We both hugged and cried for a good 30 minutes. At that point she said stop crying and looked at me and said, well, tonight there is nothing we can do about it, except for you and I to knock out these three bottles of Moscato and frick in every room of the house. 
She grabbed two wine glasses and a bottle of Moscato wine and walked out to their private pool deck saying, are you coming out here or are you going to get your freaking revenge? Now I won't go into much detail, because I don't want to get blue balls, but that night and for the next three days we sexy timed nonstop. We did all the crazy stuff you wouldn't even fantasize about, I busted all kinds of nuts in or on her 25 plus times in that period. After those days were over, we passionately said goodbye and I drove to my new destination. She kept me informed as to everything that happened when now ex-fiancé got back. The day fiancé got back was epic. I cancelled my phone the morning of the day she got back. So when the plane landed and she called for a ride it indicated the phone was disconnected. She apparently had her lover take her home. He dropped her off and left. When she came to the door, a strange couple, new tenants, answered the door and she freaked out. I can't tell you how many times she tried to call me, because the number was no longer valid. She went to her girlfriends to stay for a time as the coworker that went with her was already married. When she called her mom in a panic, her mom told her that I had come down and dropped off all her things and mentioned that all her cash was down there as well, 600 miles away. Her mom didn't tell her, that she had sexy timed me more in 3 days than fiancé and I had in the last 6 months. But she did tell her that she knew that she was cheating on me, and I said I had found a new job, place to stay a new career far away from her and all the friends we had. And that her mother was separating from her father due to infidelity. Apparently she cried for days and took a week off of work. But alas she found comfort in the arms of her married lover. Her mom never let her know where I was at. I had completely cut off that part of my life. The only link I had to that old life was fiancé's mom. And she has kept our secret to this day. Fiancé was ghosted the mosted. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe or give Royal AI some sugar by avenging the like button. Could you imagine doing one of these acts yourself? Share your experience below. I'll join the conversation. 